Yeah, the next one is I am become teeth. AKA SCP-4667. So many this Oh. Yep. Are we ready? Or do we need more time? Are the viewers ready or do they I break because we both do know the previous one was a bit heavy. Yeah. I mean Man, content content farms are already bad enough. But that was just. Uh... <laughs> and I thought like the rubber sexualizing some SCPs was bad enough. This is worse than sexualization. Yeah. Wish they actually yeah. did in the video too. They sexualized, they added sex. <laughs> what the fuck? And they literally brushed over the fact that the kids that are affected by the SCP euthanized because they're, they were, they literally had their lives destroyed. Yeah. I'm not seeing anything in chat saying we need to hold on a minute. All right, then let's, let's go. Yeah. Wait a minute, what rating does this one have up here? 49. Like I said, they only go after ones with low ratings. So not many people would like... Pay for the articles, I think? Which is just yeah, fun. Yeah, so not many people have looked at that SCP. Yeah. Alright. <clears throat> Item SCP-4667. Object Class Keter. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-4667 is currently uncontained and is believed to be located in an unknown area near the North or Baltic Sea. The tracking of abnormal tooth growth in coastal and ocean fauna is to be used to locate its precise whereabouts. Once 4667 is found and contained, it is to be stationed in a standard humanoid containment chamber located approximately 100 meters away from any population of organisms possessing teeth. Necessary living procedures such as feeding are to be performed by a D-class, which is to have their teeth pulled prior. Description SCP-4667 is a mute 26-year-old humanoid female of Soviet descent, which is this right here. Kind of looks angry. Yeah. Uh, 4667 has been diagnosed with total anodontia, which is a genetic disorder causing a total lack of teeth. Organisms possessing deciduous and or succidaneous teeth in near proximity, which is believed to be approximately 170 to 100 meters, to uh, 4667, it was subjected to dental transfigurative effect. Said organism's teeth will begin to slowly elongate vertically, with new teeth spontaneously growing directly from the skeletal system, starting from the jaw bones. These new developed teeth will similarly elongate eventually, punching through the skin and internal organs. The rate of this effect is sporadic in current theories suggesting that 4667 is capable of partially controlling the rate of tooth growth. This effect persists after the subjects are deceased. Organisms affected by 4667 will primarily, primarily expire via tooth growths, elongating through vital organs, commonly from the teeth in the lower jaw, elongating through the roof of the mouth and into the brain. Once affected, Cadavers leave the presence of 4667. Elongated tooth curves will begin to collectively bend and grow into large, intricate models and sculptures of varying subject. The following are known instances of said sculptures. A feminine winged humanoid cradling a child, grown out of a human male. Multiple humanoids all appear malnourished and are in positions of anguish, grown out of a colony of European bats. 
a large feminine winged humanoid. Its arms are extended out over multiple other humanoids, grown out of a human male. Multiple humanoids all appear to be joyous and are holding objects resembling foodstuffs, grown out of a human male. Multiple humanoids, all of which are in aggressive positions, a winged humanoid is flying away from aggressive humanoids, grown out of a human male. A feminine humanoid, noticeably larger and less well constructed as other instances, is seen crying, grown out of a human male. I don't think she likes men. Yeah, don't think so either. <laughs> Although, 4667 is known to exist, it has never been in Foundation custody. 4667 originates from Burkisk, USSR, where it was originally studied by Isif Chagaturina, a local dentist. 4667's anomalous effects were then reported to a British colleague, Russ Stanford. Stanford is known to be the leader of the GOI. Dash 0435, the Dentist Co Collective of Britain, a group originally created as Workers' Union for Dentists, but gradually changed their efforts towards the study of anomalous and non-anomalous practices of dentistry and genetic dental disorders. Oh yeah, that's them right there. Uh. Upon hearing of 4667 and its anomalous effect, Stanford requests for 4667 to be relocated to his office in the United Kingdom. In conjunction with Stanford, Jack Torina procured the British cargo ship SS Mavis via bribery of the ship's crewmen. On October 19, 1985, Mavis began sailing to the United Kingdom with 4667 locked in the cargo hold. During this, all crewmen succumbed to 4667's effects, with Jack Torina and 4667 disappearing. The following are noble fields for the logs aboard Mavis. Key. Balsalitov Contract, Captain. Carleton Tilda, Chief Mate. Kenahelm Hiram, Chief Engineer. Wilhelm Kale, Second Mate. Smashing Window, Deckhand. Aosif Jekaterina, Dentist, Infra 2, Ship Doctor. So there's a bunch of characters in this article. Would you like me to help with the voices? If you want to. Alright. Cargo hold 2302. 4667 is in a small room to the side of the cargo hold. Wendell is outside of this room's door. Kale walks by Wendell. Do you want to do Kale or Wendell? I'll do Hey. What's he doing in there? Looks through the door window. Passing. Still said anything. The dentist guy says she's mute. Got got no teeth either. Hmm. Why are we hoeing her again? Dunno. After watching though, been standing for a while. Ted would be nice. I'll see what I can find. Kale leaves, Window leans against the wall, then begins coughing. You a Kale now, lady? Need anything? Silence. Well, a nod or something sh would have been. Coughs. Would have been nice. Silence. Hey, uh, I'll go get some leftovers from supper place soon. Quite famished myself, actually. Window begins coughing once again, this time coughing up an abnormally long human tooth into his hand. Wendell looks at the tooth and then through the window towards 4667. Oh, thank you. Wendell casually puts the tooth back into his mouth and begins slowly crunching into the tooth and swallowing it. Oh. Coughs. No, no, no more. I'm good for now. Wendell coughs up another and a really long tooth. Well, if you insist. What? Bridge 2259. Contract is steering the ship whilst humming. Upon consulting a map, Contract's hand appears to cramp. Do you want to? Do you want to do Tilda or Contract? Uh, Contract. All right. Grumbles. Carpal tunnel, bloody hell! This can't wait a bit. 
As Contract picks up his pencil, a soft crack is heard, followed by Contract jumping back suddenly. Contract's left index fingernail is seen to be cracked and is bulged outwards. What the hell? enters the bridge. Something wrong, both love? Uh, man, I'm gonna talk to the doctor. Oh, what? Cos, what happened? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just gonna go. Trails off whilst leaving the bridge. Oh, well, well I already know who you're gonna take. <laughs> Stateroom uh, A, 2310. Jacob Torina is writing in a journal on his bed. When Conrad appears. Oh, we actually got a look of Isav. Isav. Right here. Oh. Hi. Right here. Isav? Isav was it? Nah. Something wrong with it. With the girl. No, no. When did we get that girl? Isav was it? My fucking nails, though, it's... Oh, shows... oh, it's the same guy! Oh. Yeah. Oh, shows I his nail. One. Yeah. Same guy as the previous one up here. Yeah. Sorry. I, I did not realize that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm, I see. Dick Serena pulls a pair of pliers out of his satchel. Hold still, my heart. Contra put his hands down on onto a nightstand where Dick Arena begins removing fingernail fragments. Underneath his fingernail, a long human tooth can be seen. What? What the fuck is? Hold still. Dick Arena begins pulling the tooth out of Contra's finger. Contra screams obscenities, and a tooth cracks out of the finger, where which begins bleeding heavily. Places the tooth onto the nightstand. I got bandages. What the? What? What could cause that? Begins wrapping Conrad's finger. Girl is losing control. Girl? Why are you here? Why is she here? Some dentist ex. I've cared for the girl for a while. She has a gift. She can control, but she is a uh, loser control. Jack Thorina takes a line of measuring tape out of his satchel and puts it against the tooth. What the hell are you talking about? Haram enters the room. Hey, oh, uh, wait, what happened to you? This isn't the time, Kellen. Ken Kellen. Man, it's important. Safe's gonna go. It's, she's going too fast. And you can't handle all this. Huh? Carlton's probably slacking. Kick him in his big break if you have to. You get it. Hope you think it's bad. Haram exits. Now, what are you saying before? I uh, know not much. Brutus Conrad Rush knows more than I. When assured, sure he'll explain better. Well, what do you know? She grows too. That's all. That is all. Not even me. Teeth? Look at teeth I pulled. How long is now? 32 millimeters? And scissors should be about 22 millimeters. Oh, so that's what's wrong with the Tooth is now 33 millimeters. Been biting tongue a lot as of late. Uh, we should check on Wendell. You go. I must stay and stuck. Alright. Stay safe. I will. Andrat leaves. Bridge 2321. What is believed to be Tilda present at the wheel, Tilda has copious amounts of elongated tooth growth surrounding their entire body which are intertwining with the controls for the ship. Tilda is not moving. 
Hiram is seen in the hallway to the bridge. Upon seeing Tilda, he begins to back away. Hiram then faints several minutes after this. A sort of crackling can be heard. A puddle of blood then begins to form under Hiram. <coughs> Cargo hold 2330. Window is seen chewing, however, no crushing can be heard. Nurse, please sir. God, I don't know. Kale enters. Oh, hey, well, got to take the spell. What the hell? What happened to? Actually, no way. Window reaches into his eye socket with two of his fingers and removes eight and a elongated tooth carefully. I still got some lying around. Shuckles. Contract enters. Wendell puts the tooth into his mouth and continues chewing. Wendell, what was that? He's eating his bloody teeth, bullslop. <laughs> Tastes better than your cooking. What? Wendell the girl. Oh, don't worry. I'm watching us still. No, Wendell. She's messing with you. You ain't supposed to have teeth coming out of your eyes like this. You realize that, right? Mm, since when? Tooth farmers in Wendell's stomach suddenly elongate, punct puncturing through his abdomen and shirt. Wendell collapses. Fuck, Wendell! What a... Get the keys. We're throwing that bitch overboard. Kale takes the keys off of Wendell. As Kale brings the keys to the door, a tooth elongates at the tip of his index finger, impaling his thumb and causing him to drop the keys. I'm gonna assume you finished reading that. Discord cut you the last part off. God damn it. <laughs> Shit! SCP-4667 reaches under the door and grabs the keys. You. <laughs> you can't unlock the door. From that way, you bloody walnut. Cargo hold side room 2336. Am I still being cut off? No. Okay. 4667 throws the keys across the room. 4667 then begins staring at the door. As it does, screaming can be heard from the other side for several minutes. Teeth elongation can be seen through the windows. Screaming stops after approximately 30 seconds. 4667 looks away from the door. Teeth outside stop growing. 4667 moves to a corner of the room and looks at the ceiling, which is noticeably convex. Ceiling begins cracking and bulging farther down. Teeth are seen breaking through the roof until the roof collapses, with the body of Haram falling down with it. Haram's back is severely affected by tooth growths. As the roof collapses, the camera is destroyed. Bridge 2340. Low fuel signifiers are blinking and a hole is now present in the hallway. S4667 emerges from the hole on a pillar of elongated teeth which slowly rises upwards. 4667 walks off of this pillar and onto the bridge, where it exits onto the deck through a side door. Deck. 2341. Jack Tarina is seen setting up a lifeboat. 4667 enters the deck. In Russian. You know I care about you and your craft, unlike these others. I don't await your reclamation. I hope my service was satisfactory. 4667 continues to stare at Jekaterina for a couple seconds, then goes back into the bridge. Jekaterina hastily leaves on the lifeboat minutes after. She literally left and killed everyone but one person. Yeah. Like it. Yep. On October 21st, 1985, Mavis washed ashore on the east coast of the United Kingdom, after which Stanford and the majority of GOI-0435 went to the site of the shipwreck. It is unknown how the group knew of the location of Mavis at the time. Multiple objects were recovered at the scene, including the bodies of all of the Mavis crewmen, a photo and a broken film camera still recording. The following is a log of the recovered recording along with the recovery covered photographed.
Recorder is is walking through a field. Cipher is seen on the side along with various others. Recorder. Oh, the picture gets bigger. Yep. How how you know she's she's here, Russ? Stanford. Spoke to me last night. She wants us to see. Keep the film steady. Others will want to see this. Maybe it's a scene in the background. Stanford begins running through the wreck. Are you in there? I started muttering from others. This, this is the ship, alright? SS Mavis, see? That's the one I, I assist Brad. Did you leave already? 4667 is now seen on the ship's deck. There, yes, even Dante. We have studied your craft, your divine work. We have heard your cries in the teeth of our patients. Not all of us forsake your gift, not all. 4667 smirks. I have done as you said, have you? A large pair of avian wings made solely out of elongated and normal sized teeth unfurl from 4667's back. It is unclear what holds these wings together. Oh, yes, of course, for your wings. So that was why. GOY 0435 collectively bows. Go make your gift clear, Evidente. Make it clear to, to the overlookers. 4667 lifts itself into the air and flies towards the mainland. As 4667 goes out in a frame, GOY-0435 begins to slowly walk towards the direction 4667 flew. Recorder drops the camera and does not appear to notice. GOY-0435 is heard silently walking into the distance. After this event, the whereabouts for any member of GOY... Dash 0435 became unknown. 4667 remains at large. And that's it. Uh, Alright. Alright, let's see how clickbaity the thumbnail is. Four. Four? You believe it's a four? Well, think of this. Look at his expression. Yeah. Also, while the teeth can do that, the random blood from the teeth that look fine is weird. Yeah. It's just an unnecessary amount of blood from spots it shouldn't be in. And no blood from the spot that should be in. Oh shit, they did something different. What? So not only did it do 4667, but Darkest Child by Kevin McLeod is licensed under Creative Commons Attribute 4.0 license. Now granted, this is not an SCP thing, because SCP is under Creative Commons Share Alike 3.0. Not Creative Commons Attribution. What the fuck happened? Okay, that was weird. Chris Commons Attribution 4.0. What so, is Darkest Child? It might be music or a different character. I have looked it up. The Darkest Child is a novel. I'm sure it's probably not just a novel. Yeah, anyways, are you ready? Yeah. The crate stood in the lobby of the Foundation. The label simply read, Attention Kloss. Sir, the scans and protocols have been completed. We haven't found anything anomalous, and whatever is inside doesn't appear to be alive. The package appeared to have been shipped from the UK by a Dr. Russ Stanford. Run a background check on that name and see what we have on him. Already done. Dentist. Head of GOI 0435. What? The Dentist Collective of Britain. Ring a bell? Not really. Let's crack it open then. Kloss signaled to the agents to open the crate. As the lid fell down, Kloss gasped in surprise. Within the crate was a winged female humanoid cradling a child. 
It was made from teeth. Welcome back. Today, I bring you SCP-4667. I am Become Teeth. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell. Kloss and Chen walk down the hallway. All we know is that thing dates back to an incident in the mid-80s. A shipman, crew, all turned up dead and disfigured. What do you mean, disfigured? It's all a little weird. That's why we're seeing Pythia. Oh, yippee. God damn it. My name is Pythia of Delphi. Come forth and ask your questions of me. But beware, the answers you receive may not be the answers... Oh, thank you, Siribat. Pythia, this is a sample from the crate we received earlier today. Can you tell us more about it? Bring it forth and set it down in front of me. If you just pop yourself out of that little lizard terrarium of yours, you could grab it yourself. Chen. Oh, warrior Chen. So fierce, yet so exorbos. So what what? It means, um, brainless. Oh, you're asking for it, lady. You're really asking for it. Never mind that now. What can you tell us, Pythia? Come closer and witness the events of that treacherous ocean crossing. The vessel what? careened and rolled in the tumultuous waters. The crew members looked through the glass window at the raging ocean. Did Their expressions were of grave concern. The man who appeared to be the Probably. captain clutched his right hand, a bloody rag over it. Behind the wheel were bloody teeth, much longer than they should have been. Down below decks, one of the men paced by a locked door. He laughed and giggled to himself, his hands covering what? his mouth, what? blood pouring from between his fingers. Not... He looked through the glass window and motioned as he talked to whomever was inside. As he turned his head, he dropped his hands. Long, oddly shaped and bent teeth fell from his mouth as he chewed on other teeth. Well, that was pretty horrifying. No. Indeed, but we That's still how it don't went, really and he let out a bunch of stuff with. too. If there's one guy who knows about teeth, it's the professor. What? <laughs> Ain't that the I, truth. They left out most of the story. Yeah, they cut out most of the story and they changed everything the characters they did did. He wasn't laughing as he ate the teeth. For some reason, he thought it was her trying to feed him. Yeah. <laughs> He's definitely a little long in the tooth. Kloss shook his head in disgust. Yekaterina. Yekaterina. Hmm. Ballerina, ballerina. Why what? do you always insist on acting like a fool, Agent Chen? I don't Good know. question. Let you know once I have an answer. Anyway, this is an SCP before your time, Kloss. SCP-4667. Or as I like to call her, the Tooth Fairy. The records date back to the early 80s. USSR, a young girl, anodontia. That means she had no teeth, Chen. Chen opened his mouth to disagree, but quickly closed it again. We've only ever heard about her. She's never been in containment. Be careful with this one. She can control and cause teeth growth if you get too near. Understood. Why do you think she sent the statue to me, though? Talk to Yekaterina. He'll be quite old now. But perhaps he can shed some light on the situation. Good afternoon, Dr. Jacaterina. Thanks for speaking what? with us. Yes, yes. Okay. Hold on. Hold on, let's look. Go back. We have a picture of Jacaterina. Yeah, he was hmm. old back then, so he would be dead. Hmm. So not the same person. And somehow alive after. Yeah. Wouldn't he look like he's in his hundreds or something? Point. I don't know. Lucius asks, I answer. How can I help you? We want to ask you about the Tooth Fairy. Oh, the Tooth Fairy, you say? You have seen her? No, not exactly. We received a gift from her. The tooth sculpture. Yes. How did you know? 
be carefully, they worship her as God. I too once believed her to be a goddess. Now, maybe a demon. That Dr. Stanford, he... What? He... Violin disciple. An agent came rushing into the room. Dr. Claus, another package has arrived for you. We're getting odd readings from this one. I'm sorry, Dr. Tectorina. I'll have to call this meeting off and reschedule. Thanks for your time. No, wait. The connection dropped as Claus and Chen headed out of the room, following the agent. They used the Discord the lobby, sound effect. A larger crate sat unopened. The scans have come back inconclusive. The x rays appear to be another tooth statue. But the biological scans aren't making any sense. And there was this for you. The agent handed Kloss a closed letter. Kloss passed the envelope to Chen as he went to have a closer look at the crate. Dear colleague, I present to you a gift. A most treasured and valuable gift. It has traveled far and wide to finally reach your shores. Treat it well. I live only to serve and abide. May the toothless god bless you. The guards pried the crate door open, arms trained and at the ready. As they shone their flashlights into the crate, they breathed a sigh of relief. It was another tooth statue. This one was of a humanoid woman, kneeling with her face facing towards the ground. And the agents dropped the remaining naked. three sides of the crate, fully unveiling the figure. Chen signaled to stop. He heard a faint creaking coming from the crate. The figure's eyes swept open. Chen instinctively ran towards uh. Klaus, driving him backwards from the room as the figure what? stood up and unfurled its wings. It's the, it's the anomaly. Made entirely from teeth. But why the fuck are they naked? SCP-4667 is currently... I don't know. ...only uncontained. ...and is believed to be located in an unknown area near the North or Baltic Sea. The tracking of abnormal tooth growth in coastal and ocean fauna is to be used to locate its precise whereabouts. Once SCP-4667 is found and contained, it is to be stationed in a standard humanoid oh containment God. chamber located approximately 100 meters away from any population of organisms possessing teeth. Necessary living procedures, such as feeding, are to be performed by a D-class, which is to have their teeth pulled prior. SCP-4667 is a mute 26-year-old humanoid female of Soviet descent. SCP-4667 has been diagnosed with total anodontia. Organisms possessing deciduous or succedaneous teeth in near proximity to SCP-4667 will be subjected to a dental transfigurative effect. Said organism's teeth will begin to slowly elongate vertically, with new teeth spontaneously growing directly from the skeletal system, starting from the jawbones. These newly developed teeth will similarly elongate, eventually fact? puncturing through the skin and internal organs. The rate of this effect is sporadic, with current theory suggesting that SCP-4667 is capable of partially controlling the rate of tooth growth. This effect persists after the subjects are deceased. Organisms affected by SCP-4667 will primarily expire via tooth growth elongating through vital organs commonly from the teeth and the lower jaw elongating through the roof of the mouth and into the brain. Once affected cadavers leave the presence of SCP-4667, elongated tooth growth will begin to collectively bend and grow into large, intricate models and sculptures of varying subjects. Yep. Hate your braces? Not wearing your retainer like your orthodontist told you to? You better wise up soon. You don't want a visit from this tooth fairy. As always, have a care. Yeah. Removal of characters, majority of the ship crew. Yeah, they removed the majority of all the characters in the entire thing. Yeah. So three. They, they did license it, but... Alright. Added gore or violence? Gore. Yeah, they they did. They very much did. <laughs> they had a good streak for a while of less violence, but that's been broken. Yeah. Deviates from the plot of the article. Four. Four, yeah. The only men in the video. Three. 
And they did remove females, only so they didn't re remove one, but that's also because she's literally the sure. Maybe we could do four. Four for that one? Well, think about it. They only kept the one lady. And they not only sexualized her, but look what they did to her face. Yeah. Five percent. 